Hi and welcome to the third tutorial in this 3D modeling series for Form Z. I hope you found the previous tutorial helpful. Today we're going to be learning some reshape tools and Boolean operations which allow you to make some more complex and custom shapes for 3D printing. In today's tutorial we'll be having a look at some of the tools from the reshape palette and some of the tools from the modify palette. Specifically, we'll be looking at the Boolean operation tools. They come from a great mathematician who gave us the algorithms that allow us to use these tools. First of all, we're going to take a look at the reshape palette. So we'll just get a couple of shapes from our generate palette here. Uh, we're just going to make a cylinder and a cube. We're just going to make these dynamically instead of numerically. So you can just click and drag to get your 2D circle and then pull up to get your cylinder. And the same again with a cube. Just click and drag and drag, click to end. Great. So now we can take a look at some of the tools in our reshape palette. First of all, we're going to use the offset tool. And this tool offsets the boundary of the shape. So we just click in the middle and pull out here. That's nice, and maybe we'll put one on the cube as well. And then once we've offset that boundary, we're able to push or pull the faces using the reshape tool. So you can just select a face and you can pull it out, or select another face and push it in uh, as far as you like. Um, and you can infinitely offset different parts of the shapes. Um, you can push and pull an entire face or offset another section and draw that up as well. So you can just have a play around with that tool. Sort of toggling between the offset and the reshape functions. Next we're going to have a look at the second row of tools in the reshape palette. First of all, let's have a look at the twist tool. When we select our twist tool and select the shape we want to twist, we get a couple of control handles. The yellow handle is the control handle, um, and you can click and drag this around to twist the shape as much as you like, and just release the mouse when you're happy with the shape. The other color handles are for the extent. So these direct where and when the shape will bend, so you can just move those up and down and have a play with those. If at any time you get stuck with a shape that you think is terrible and you want to step backwards, you can just press Command Z and it'll return to its previous form. Command B allows you to go forward again if you've stepped back too many stages. Next, let's take a look at the Bulge tool, which is this guy here. Uh, again, select the object that you're interested in manipulating and the yellow handle will be the control handle. When you move this yellow handle, a number of other factors come up and you'll see the purple dotted line here and that will allow you to bulge or use the tool in a uniform fashion. We also have the other X, Y and Z axis which you can follow along with that tool um, and manipulate along in that way. So you can just see how that tool works um, and you can once again manipulate the extent with the red handle here up and down the shape to whatever shape you like. Okay, so next let's take a look at the bend along path tool. That's this guy on the third row that looks a little bit like a pretzel. To use this tool maybe we'll make a different cylinder here just to kind of clean things up a bit. Um, put that guy there and maybe we can delete some of these other forms. So you can just use your pick tool, delete the whole thing and press delete and clean up the palette. Okay, so let's select our bend along path tool. To use this tool a little more easily we can take a look through the left perspective here um, and we just want to make a line that we're going to bend this shape along. So we'll use the point spline tool, which is this guy here, and you just click to make a bit of a bendy path and press E to end. 
Now let's get back to the isometric view and you can again just follow the instructions in the top left hand corner. So it says select the object that you want to bend and then select the path to bend along and voila! And you can toggle around to have a look at what that shape looks like and depending on which direction you would like your shape to bend you can click your initial line from top to bottom or bottom to top. It's good to note here that the yellow points on your object are again live edit points so you can just grab and move those um, if there was a different shape that you were hoping for. And if you again if you get in trouble you can just step backwards by pressing command Z and it will go back to your previous form. So again I've just cleaned up the palette by deleting the shapes and let's take a look at the next tool, the morph tool here. So first of all to use that tool we just need two different shapes. So let's start with a sphere here and maybe we'll make a cone in the other corner. Click and drag. Uh, and again you can follow the instructions. So once we select the morph tool it tells us to select the source object, so that will be the sphere, and then select the destination object, which is our cone. We say OK. And you'll see that it's made an object which is halfway between the two shapes that we previously gave it. You'll see that it's made a object which is halfway between our two previous shapes which is the sphere and the cone and you'll see that that is now on a trajectory which is modulated by this slider bar on under the tool options and you can just take it all the way to the right which sort of sends it all the way in one direction and to the left and so you can just have a play around with that tool and see what kind of shapes you can produce between two different objects to begin with. The next tool we're going to take a look at is the Axial Suite tool. So again I've just cleared the palette and we'll go to our Draw 1 tool, our Draw 1 palette and select the Polygon tool and we're just going to make a little hexagon here to work with. And once we've made that shape we will turn to the left view and similar to the bend along path tool, we're going to again make a line to sweep this shape along. So you can just use the point spline tool and make a little bendy line and when you're done press E to end. Return back to the isometric view. So we'll return to our derive to palette and choose our axial sweep tool and again just follow our instructions so we'll select the source shape which is our guy here and the line that we want it to sweep along is a path and there we have it and again it's good to note that all of these points are live edit points so you can just grab them with your pick tool if you lose them you can just show controls there and edit any of those points for the shape that you like. Within the Derive 2 palette there's a whole variety of sweep tools um, that are really interesting and fun to have a look at. So just play with those and you can follow along on the instructions at the top and you'll be able to get some great shapes out of those. So now we're going to take a look at some of the boolean operations within the modify palette. First of all to have a look at some of these we're going to create um, a sphere and a cone. So we'll get those from our generate palette again. We'll put a sphere right here in the center and also put a cone in there. Now we're going to use a new tool called the rotate tool which can be found down in the bottom left hand corner here and we're going to rotate our cone 180 degrees in space. Uh, it's important to note that the active plane influences how it rotates so we will alter this plane and then to rotate our cone we select the cone and select the center of rotation. You can rotate tool uh, shapes 
numerically or dynamically, but in this case we want to be really accurate, so we'll put in 180 degrees and press enter. And there we go. So we want to now return to the the active plane to its usual position and from the top view use the move tool which is this guy down here to move the cone into the center of the sphere as so we can see from the bird's eye view this is a good view to make sure it's right in the center and then we return to the isometric view and if you have a look in the wireframe view you can see now that the cone is sitting inside the sphere so we'll go back to the shaded work view and we're going to use another tool, uh, the difference tool now from the Boolean operations. And so we, cl we click the difference tool and it wants you to select the object you want to keep and select the object that you would like to go away or difference. Um, and if we have a look from the shaded view, shaded work view, you can see now that it has differenced the cone from the sphere. It's looking pretty good. Um, if we go back to the shaded work view and we can press Command Z to step back in time so that we've got our cone and sphere lined up again. Now let's have a look at how the union operation tool works. And this tool, as it suggests, unions them or brings them together. So you can again select the two objects that you want to merge and select a union and they will now be merged as one and you can see that by pulling your mouse over them they are merged together as highlighted as one object. If I, I also want to show you the rounding tool where you can select the segment sequence from the topological level options with your pick tool which means it will just select that one line and now if we click on our rounding tool it will round the edge between our two objects to smooth them into one lovely object and there's a lot of different options under the rounding select tool so you can just play with those and see what they do. So under the boolean operations the three main ones are the union, the difference and the slice tool. So let's just um, step back to our sphere and maybe the original cone and we will do a slice. So in order to slice this we want to go to our top view again and we want to create a line which is going to be the line that we slice with. It's best done in the wire frame view so that you can see where your line is going to run and we can make any kind of line that you like which is a little point spline point spine <laughs> tool through there and we press E to end. Um, and then if we want to use our slice tool, we can again select the object that we want to slice. Here it is. So select the object to be sliced, select the line to slice with, and now it is sliced in two. Maybe if we go back to the shaded work view, and now we can separate these two bits and show you the way that it has been sliced. We can use our move tool here to move things away and we've now sliced right through with the line that we drew there.